This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Back to Africa, everybody. It is the most magical afternoon here. We're sitting with a magnificent herd of elephants. This is CGTN's Wild Wonderland live show. Absolutely magnificent. This is happening, folks. This is 100% live. Here we are. We're watching the migration story unfold. Here's a lion. There's a lion right next to us. Oh, that was close. You can't possibly script something like this. Good afternoon and welcome everybody to the CTGN live safari coming to you from the Mara Triangle here in Kenya. We have two very sleepy lionesses. My name is Steve Falkenbridge. I'm joined by Jean-Dre on camera. And as I said, we're coming to you from three locations live here in the Mara Triangle in Kenya, as well as in Ser the Serengeti in Tanzania, just south from where we are now, as well as down south in the Sabi Sands in South Africa. Africa. Now, you can communicate with us using two hashtags, hashtag CGTN Wild and hashtag Wild Wonderland. Communicate with us throughout the show. We would love to hear from you. Now, looking at the migration herds here across the open plains, let's go and look at a little bit more about it. The red oat grass plains of the Mara Serengeti sway in anticipation. In February, Around 400,000 wildebeest are born on the short grass of the Serengeti's southern plains. Just half an hour, the calves have found their feet. And one of nature's greatest journeys begins. From the southern plains, more than a million animals move northwest into the Serengeti's western corridor, massing on the banks of the Grumeti River. As the rut ends, the herds gallop north once more. Eventually, two million grazers arrive to feast on the abundance of the Maasai Mara. It begins with a trickle of the zebra vanguard, enjoying the undisturbed long grass plains, making the first crossings of the turbulent Mara River. Many fall to the rapids and the crocodiles. And then comes the main body of the migration, the thundering herds of white-bearded gnu eating songs of chaos in search of green pasture. The herds know the danger, but the call for food is too great. All must take the plunge. Not all will make it. For those that do, hungry prides and clans patrol the banks. For survivors, rich red oat grass is the reward. Before it's time to cross the river again, as nature's greatest herd follows the life-giving storms and verdant plains of the Mara Serengeti for nourishment. Isn't the migration just the most spectacular thing? And you can see that we are in the northern part of the Serengeti in Tanzania and we're with an elephant bull with some of the herds of the migration in the background. It really is absolutely incredible to be in an area like this. The spectacle of being able to see these big open plains with all of this is absolutely amazing. My name is Tristan. On a camera, I've got David this afternoon and it is a warm welcome to Tanzania. As you can see, it's some of the most beautiful scenery one could ever imagine to have these lines of wildebeest with this elephant bull in the foreground is absolutely amazing now we do have a few little technical difficulties given that we are in the middle of africa it sometimes does happen and so if i'm a little bit out of sync we will get it sorted out as soon as possible but isn't that beautiful you can see this Ellie bull is just slowly grazing his way across the big open East African plains. Every now and then you'll see him stop and he'll just use his feet a little bit where he'll kick the grass and that just breaks the grass at the root level and then he'll put it into his mouth. And he's an absolute gentle, 
giant. It's really, really special to be in the company of him as well as all the wildebeest as you can see in the background right now is another very special animal that we haven't seen up here in the last couple of days but trishala down in south africa is sitting with one of my absolute favorite animals in the whole wide world this is another wonderfully gentle animal and it is Hosanna, a three-year-old leopard that we have here down in the Sabi sand of South Africa. Now isn't he a beautiful? Now I, my name is Trishala and I'm all the way down here. Hello and I've got Sebastian on camera with me and we are so excited to bring you Wild Wonderland today and excited especially because Hosanna has been so good to us. So let's have a good look at him. Now he's woken up for you all which is really exciting because he was sleeping quite peacefully and then a herd of buffalo came past. Now on the Sabi sand, we're especially lucky to have leopards like this guy. And Tristan did tell you it's one of his favorite little leopards. And that's because he's got the most gentle manner and he is a wonderful sport. Now he's gotten up to have a look at the herd that walked past, but he has decided a bit too big for him. So he's going to sleep a little bit more. We are very lucky down here in South Africa. In this area, we have a density of about 12 leopards per 100 kilometers squared. Now, that is a lot. And sometimes in this particular reserve, there have been even seven leopards in one sighting. How awesome is that? Hassan thinks that it's quite boring. That's why he's decided to close his eyes and sleep. But he's hanging out close to a pan just behind him and that means that any antelope or other herbivores that will come to drink he has the opportunity to maybe nab one you can see it's quite windy so all the antelope are a bit skittish at the moment and he will have to be lucky so hopefully he will but while we wait to see what he gets up to let me send you up to james in the maasai mara of kenya enjoying a spectacular time with a large group of elephants probably five or six breeding herds and they all seem to be heading in the same direction this is one grouping in front of us there are another four or five behind them and they're heading towards a forested area that comes down off the Ololo escarpment and i suspect what they're doing is that they're heading there to a have a drink whether because there's water obviously I think they're probably going to vary their diet with a bit of browsing of the trees and also I think they'll probably like to spend the night close to cover. I'm not really sure why that should be the case because it's not like they get attacked by a lot of animals out here. Lions might take very small ones but when the little ones are in big groups of adults like this it's very unusual for them to be preyed upon. It's just tremendously peaceful to spend time around elephants and I'm going to be quiet for the next eight seconds and you can just listen and see if you can hear them tearing the grass. So they're being very silent and it is astounding how amazingly quiet elephants can be. My name is James Hendrell. You have got James on camera. He is big James. I'm small James. <laughs> and we're enjoying very much spending time in the Maasai Mara, the northern parts of the Maasai Mara, before the wildebeest migration gets here with these elephants. The elephants don't like the wildebeest very much. We find it absolutely fascinating, as does Steve Falconbridge sitting with the migrating herds on their way up. We do indeed, James. It is fascinating, and we just had this enormous herd of wildebeest from the other side of the drainage lugger. We've been watching them for some time. They've been just relaxing sort of on the other side there and something got into them and a huge number of them came charging down the hill and now they've crossed that little drainage area there to come to this side. We're not quite sure exactly what has spooked them. We've been looking with the binoculars to see if there's any lions or anything chasing nothing going on at all our lions are fast asleep over here on this nice warm afternoon but we're hoping if that herd does come any closer 
that it might just be too much for these two lions lying in the shade. Mia, you want to know if the family stay together, and it definitely seems that way. Um, what we often see is that a herd will cross, and then every now and again, one youngster or even an adult decides to turn around and go back. And possibly what that can be is just the sort of accumulation or the, the pressure, uh, enormous amounts of animals, a bit of confusion. Uh, they try and stick together. That's probably what all the noises are for. And then every now and again, the youngster just loses mum or mum loses its baby. And then they go cross back thinking, ooh, maybe they're on the other side again. Almost like if you lost your child in a supermarket, you panic a little bit until eventually you find them somewhere doing something very safe and normally okay. But um, it's hard to say, but it does seem as if the herds, when they cross, they stay together and they seem to move in groups as well. What we noticed a lot yesterday is lots of groups of males together and then lots of family groups, so females with their offspring. And you'll even find sometimes groups of offspring together, 15, 20 young wildebeest calves sort of hanging out together in a little nursery and a couple adults sort of off on the side busy eating. But um, we are going to sit with these lions for a while longer. Hopefully they're going to get up and do something. For the moment they look like they're having a very good snooze in the shade. A very good idea on a very nice warm afternoon like this. Well, isn't it interesting that where we're sitting right now, those Inselbergs in the background is pretty much where Steve is. So we're in two different countries, yet the herd is spanning over both of those countries at the moment. And we're sitting watching not only the wildebeest, but the zebras that take part in this migration as well. It's pretty insane to be on both sides of this migration and to be able to move with it wherever it goes. It's one of the most incredible opportunities to see the movements of the, of the herd. And whether it goes north or south makes no difference over the course of the next week, we'll still be able to follow them along. Now you can see there are a few zebras in amongst this grouping and it's interesting because often when we talk about the migration everybody assumes that there is an equal number of wildebeest and zebra that move around and it's not quite like that. What you actually find is that there are way 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 more uh, wildebeest, over a million of them, whereas the zebras only about 250,000 that move around within this grouping so while they are a part of the migration they are in no ways the equal in in terms of numbers as the wildebeest now there's actually even some tommies that are also running around chasing one another just to the left there's a few thompson gazelles that are busy establishing a bit of a dominance you can see there's a male running with his horns chasing some of the females and just kind of trying to work out exactly how to get his herd all sorted out. You'll find there is a bit of competition. These guys will mate at this time of the year. And it's actually not just them that's doing it. What we're finding is that the wildebeest are also still mating, which is quite unusual. Normally at this time of the year, wildebeest will have been done with their mating. But due to various conditions and quite a dry year so far, we're finding that there's still some of the male wildebeest that are being a little bit temperamental and are actually chasing one another around, which is quite interesting. It is the most beautiful backdrop plains of East Africa have got to be some of the most incredible in all of Africa. Right, now I was saying that the zebras are part of the migration and actually they fulfill a very, very, very important function because these guys are the ones that often will get this entire process going when they start heading north. Bye. Massive aggregations of zebra form the vanguard of the Great Migration. They advance in front of a vast wave of wildebeest and Thompson's gazelle, cropping the grass for those behind them. As for all the migrating herbivores, one of the greatest perils is the skulking terror below the surface of the river. Some will provide the first migration meal for the patient reptiles. Others will defend themselves. Zebras have a vicious bite and a mighty kick. This one will live to fight another day. Well, we are so close to a herd of elephants and we just have to make sure that I'm very, very quiet 
because we're meters away from this female and she's not quite sure exactly what's going on. The wind is swirling and we're here in the greater Kruger National Park area of South Africa. My name is Jamie. Behind the camera is Craig. And can you believe you are watching this live on CGTN's Wild Wonderland? Meters away from these alleys, we're going to have to move pretty shortly as they are now moving away from us, but they could actually loop around to get downwind of us. Obviously, these are wild elephants, which means that they are potentially dangerous to us. Being out on foot means that you have to have an extra degree of a caution when you approach any of the wild animals that you see. And on a windy day like today, for an animal like an elephant with an amazing sense of smell, but a very poor sense of eyesight, this wind creates a sense of disturbance within them. And they're just moving through the bushes over here. And we're going to get a nice open boo very shortly. And I'm going to get up and move slightly, just a little bit away. Okay, I think we can move now, Craig. We're going to get up. Oh, oh. No, nope, we're going to stay down. As I was about to move, the cow came out into sh interview. All right, they are going to try and loop us shortly. There goes a little youngster running along past us. They are going to try and <laughs> loop around them. Now, for those of you that watched us this morning, we were stuck on top of a termite mound watching a buffalo herd. The good news is that we managed to get away from the buffaloes. They moved off and we were able to go and have some breakfast. But now we're back out once again and again, frozen in place. We cannot move from where we are now. We've stumbled upon this herd. And as I said, on windy days like today, for an animal like an elephant, it can be very, very dangerous indeed if you get something like this wrong. All right. As these elephants move past us and we look for a slightly safer place to be, there's one that's going to walk into the open there. There we go. We're going to send you across to James in the Masai Mara to see them from a vehicle. We're going to have one more gorgeous look at these elephants. Most of them now heading towards us. And they're grazing and browsing on various bits and pieces. Look at the little one there, trying out his strength. He's having a little bit of a wrestle with a brother or a sister under the watchful eye of the parents. Lots of little ones here. Now, elephants have to spend an enormous amount of time eating, of course. And that's because they're so big and they have a huge nutritional or calorific need. But the babies, because they still drink milk and the milk is very rich, they don't have to spend nearly as much time eating grass or browsing off the trees. And so they have the time to play and mess around. It's a little bit like human beings, you know, that kids have time to play and mess around. But unfortunately, adults have to get on with the business of making a living. Carla, you say what cute little babies? Yes, I think that there is a two-way competition for the cutest animals in the wilderness. First is lion cubs, and second is beautiful little baby elephants. They are just too cute, and the way they play is so amusing. It's so human in so many ways. They behave like small children and then when they get a little bit older it's so interesting to see how the females become a lot more serious a lot more quickly than the bulls do the bulls just keep playing and messing around eventually the bulls become so irritating to the females that they get tossed out of the herd and it's a little bit like human beings and uh, certainly ancient human societies where men used to be tossed out from the village while the women stayed within the village because the men needed to go off and find themselves and learn who they were and then perhaps they'd come back. And it's very similar with the elephants, which I think is amazing. We're going to leave these elephants now. There is a chance that we're going to be able to see a black rhinoceros, which is a highly endangered, very special creature. While we drive there at high speed, let's go back to Tristan, who is in amongst the herds of the thundering migration. 
Well, I hope that James does find that black rhino. It's very, very special to be able to see them in East Africa or Kenya is one of the very good places to see them. As you can see, we're still amongst the wildebeest herd and it's not just them that is actually here at the moment. As you saw very briefly there, there's also a herd of buffalo in the background and you can actually tell the difference from a long, long way away just by the coloration that you see. The buffalo that is in the back there, you can see they take on a very dark, almost dull coloration, whereas the wildebeest are a slightly lighter, almost silvery shimmer to them and they shine a lot more and so when you see herds from a big distance you can actually tell the difference between the buffalo and the wildebeest even from a long long way away it's pretty special to be able to sit here and to have not only wildebeest and zebra but you know buffalo and topi and thompson's gazelle it's a, such a special feeling to be sitting in amongst all of these guys it's absolutely amazing now lauren you want to know whether or not the babies are still nursing and the baby wildebeest that is um so no not many of them there might be a couple that were late bloomers and that are still having a bit of a, a nurse but for the most part no most of them are onto grass now since they left the western corridor and have started coming up into this north they have started to feed on grass more than milk itself and so you can see they grow really quite a lot since they were born in around february and march um, and they've developed enough to be able just to stay on to grass now and it's actually amazing to watch how much grass is eaten by these guys if you come into this area in the next couple days the grass will go from this long length in places to absolutely short it will look as though there's been a lawnmower that's gone through here and it's all of these herbivores that are just moving along and grazing and those little ones are part of that it's absolutely amazing to see how quickly they actually develop but isn't that absolutely beautiful now you can see there's a bit of water here at the moment now this water is going to be vitally important for these wildebeest and zebra we often talk about the fact that they go down to the river and they have to do these crossings and they have to try and brave these crocodiles and all these threats that are around the river but a lot of them will actually find water in places like this so small little luggers is what they're called is with that fill up with rainwater and it's why the wildebeest often follow rain so even in an area like this and their general movement is north what you're going to find is that they're actually going to slow down in places and move maybe east west or south depending on the rain that falls around in their immediate area and that's because it fills up places like this which are far safer for them to drink but it's amazing just sitting here and listening i'm not sure if you can hear the sort of grunts and groans of the herd. It becomes a hum when you're in a herd of this size. It's absolutely amazing. Now, I'm trying to see if I can see any signs of some of the males fighting and trying to compete for a small little area that they can then group females into but it seems as though everyone's quite calm at the moment probably because it's quite late in the afternoon it's been an incredibly hot day here today and so i wouldn't be surprised that they are just taking it very 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 easy Well, Hasana is on the move again, and we're so lucky that we managed to get in here because it's quite a thick area. Now, where we have old riverbeds or what we call drainage lines, this is one of them, and there's lots of trees around, so it's difficult to get around. And of course, if you're a leopard, you can easily just leap about like Hasana did over a few branches earlier. But now something has gotten his attention. Oh, perhaps it was an itch. Now, he's a very handsome leopard, and like I mentioned before... Oh, no, don't go, Hosanna! Now, I can't move much further, so we'll just have to follow him with the camera. Hopefully, he'll pop out in front. Where are you, boy? He's almost there. He's almost there. You can see his rosettes. Well, he certainly is one of our most loved animals out here, so let's learn a little bit about him. The little chief Hosanna was born in February 2016 to Karula, the late queen of Juma. We met him and his sister the day they were born. Hosanna was a naughty little leopard from the beginning and we loved watching his playful antics. Tragically, Karula mysteriously disappeared. 
leaving her cubs to fend for themselves at just over a year old. Sadly, the little female was unable to keep herself from harm's way and did not survive the loss of their mother. But little Hosanna overcame. And has captured our hearts. The little chief is an unusually social cat. If not entertaining us with his mischievous antics, he is often seeking out the company of his father, Tingana. Hosanna is maturing, however, and will soon begin to display territorial behavior, a situation that Tingana will almost certainly not tolerate. Then, the young chief will have to find his own domain. Hosanna has survived against the odds to become a magnificent, independent, young male leopard. I love Hosanna, and I've known him since he was very, very little, but right now, he is the last thing on my mind. Uh, we're walking, and it seems as though today, everywhere we go, we encounter a herd of elephants, and we've had to run up the top of this termite mound. They're featuring quite heavily in my day today, and we've had to seek refuge up here. And this particular female over here, she's a big old female, probably one of the leaders of the herd, if not the matriarch herself, judging just by her size and her age, has picked up our smell. So I've mentioned that the wind is blowing. So this is quite a precarious position that we're in. You'll notice I'm keeping very, very still. I'm keeping my movements to a minimum because she has stayed behind while the rest of the herd has walked just a couple of meters down below us and they are now just hidden by this buffalo thorn you can hear how the wind is howling you can see how the wind is howling and on days like this you have to be extremely cautious with the elephants now there's nothing we can do here we have to sit tight we have to keep still and i have to keep my voice down so that these elephants feel comfortable and relaxed enough to walk off She's coming now towards us. She is an old girl. She knows that there's something here, but she hasn't seen us. See how she's lifting up her trunk? There's a very, very good chance she's going to come right up to investigate. But I'm hoping that it doesn't come to that, because if she does, then we'll have to stand up and present ourselves, and I'd prefer to avoid that. Obviously, when we're on foot out here, our big thing is to try and make sure that the animal's behavior isn't changed by our presence in any way. All right. So as a mischievous youngster decides to make an approach from my left, I'm going to keep an eye on every elephant that I can. In the meantime, let's go back across it to Steve in the midst of the chaos of the migration. Yes, indeed, Jamie, elephants on foot are some of the best and most wonderful experiences to behold. And you are with us live again in the Mara with the CGTN Wild Wonderland live show. And we have moved off slightly from our two flat cats. I can still see them with my binoculars in a the distance. They're not doing too much. They're still enjoying the shade of that little croton thicket up on the hill. But the herds that we have in front of us here are slowly feeding in a direction towards them. It might be enough to get them to raise their heads. They didn't look very full. Although it is possible they have been munching on wildebeest for the last few days, they didn't have overly bloated bellies, which means that they might hunt again. We might be lucky to actually catch it for you in this hour. How exciting would that be? But uh, the herds are around us, and the behavior that they're portraying this afternoon compared to the morning is quite different. They're much more spread out, much more relaxed. Uh, they probably know that the predators are doing exactly that. The lions are just there towards the sort of middle of the screen in the thickets. You can't really see it. It's just a little tawny little, um, little bunch in the bushes there. And, well, we're going to stay with these herds. Maybe the lions will get up and do something for us shortly. But James has found a beautiful reptile. Look at 
the special creature we found on our way to the black rhino. This is a water monitor lizard. And although it looks like a crocodile, it most certainly isn't. Now you find monitor lizards all over the world. And the biggest one I've ever seen was actually in Thailand. It's called a sea monitor lizard and it's about four times that size. That one's about one and a half meters long, about the same size as the small crocodile we saw today. My name is James Hendry and James is on camera. It's great to have you with us watching CGTN's Wild Wonderland live show. It's just gone off into the grass there. We'll just see if we can get one more look. It's gonna go and look for frogs and insects and possibly even small mammals to eat. So that was the water monitor lizard. Please remember to send your questions and comments through to us using the hashtag CGTNWild on Twitter, otherwise the hashtag WildWonderland. Either will work. Send us your questions and comments. You are the most important part of any live wildlife show. There it is. It's just stuck its head out. See it there, James? There we are. Kemet, that's a very good question. What are we doing to protect the animals? Well, our role in protecting the animals as wildlife filmmakers is to make people aware of wildlife and help them to enjoy wildlife, connect them with nature. The more people that enjoy our programming, the more people that enjoy being part of a wildlife show, the more likely they are to appreciate conservation, the more likely they are to become interested in nature, and the more likely they are to help conserve it. So that is our role in conserving nature. This particular area, the Maasai Mara, and of course the Mara Serengeti, is making an enormous contribution to conservation by being a tourist destination. That's how they make their money, and through making that money, they are able to maintain this natural paradise for all of the creatures that live in it from the trees of course to the grasses and the flowers and the insects and the spiders and the ticks and then up to the birds and the glorious frogs and reptiles and beautiful mammals we're going to catch up with our rhino he's just down the road here let's go back to tristan and a herd of beefaloes Indeed, we are with a herd of buffalo, James, and you can see they are watching us and giving the eye that only a buffalo can. They have this look about them when they stare at you that you know all about who they are. And it's really quite intimidating when they do it and when the whole herd walks at you. It's an amazing feeling and one that is very, very special. Now, for those of you that have just joined us, my name is Tristan. Um, it's very, very special to have you guys with us in Serengeti in Tanzania. It is amazing to be in this part of the world. Um, it is fast becoming one of my favorite reserves in Africa, and I've been fortunate enough to go to many, many reserves in Africa, but this place is just so, so special. So, Ravinda, are there any animals or birds that are only found in Tanzania? Um, Animal-wise, um, not that I'm aware of. I think there's pretty much everything that you get here, you probably get in most parts. Well, in fact, in, in various parts of East Africa, so between the countries that border it. Um, birds, most definitely. Uh, there's quite a few different species in, in various parts of Tanzania that have very specialist birds. It's quite a long list actually. Um, so there are, but mammal wise, I'm just trying to think if there are any. Um, I don't, to my mind, I can't think of any, especially not in the Serengeti ecosystem. Pretty much all of the ones that occur here um, occur in other reserves across East Africa. Um, maybe the golden jackal, um, but they do occur in other parts as well. Um, but that's about it. Right, now while we see where these buffalo are going to head and see if we can find anything on the fringe of this herd that might be hunting, it's the perfect time for cats. It sounds like Trishala down in South Africa has her leopard that is on the move at the moment. Now my cat, we finally caught up with him again and we're very lucky to be able to do that. And he is in full stalk mode. Can you see that he's low and he's ready to go? Now remember, my name is Trishala with Sebastian on camera and we're very, very happy, of course, to be 100% live with you. How awesome is that? And this cat is on the move right now here in the Sabi Sand in South Africa. Let's move with him. Hosanna. Where did you go, my cat? He's there. Ah. 
right. We, so it's very difficult, of course, to locate animals, especially in these thick bushes where it's not on the road. There he is, there he is. Let's just stop here and see what he's doing. He is a very, very curious leopard. And he looks like he's heading towards another pan. But first, he's going to pop out on top of that termite mount so that he can get a good view. Let's actually move a little bit further so that we can also get a good view of him on that termite mount. Thank you, Hasana. You've been so good to us. That's, ah, there we go. There he is. Right on top there. Now he's at the top of it so he can get a really nice view of what's going on around him. Hello. He's an absolutely stunning cat. Now you can see that the wind is bellowing. You can actually hear it. And that's what he is relying on. He's re in relying on the animals being a little bit skittish, being unsure. Beautiful cat. Now, you learned a little bit more about him earlier, and you can see why he's much loved. But while I tried to figure out, oh, I was about to say he's going to go and do something else, but no, he's going to flop down. So while he does that, I'm going to sit with him, and let's actually have a look at him and his relationships with the other leopards in the area. Hosanna is now almost three. Although an accomplished hunter, he still has much to learn about life as a growing male leopard. A few months ago, his older sister, the new queen, Tundi, arrived at one of his kills and took advantage of his hard-earned meal. She helped herself, as the little chief contemplated from a distance. But. Lately, it seems he is beginning to understand that with his growth comes more authority. It is now Hosanna's turn to help himself. Tundi does her best to try and stop him from taking her food. But he is no longer submissive to his smaller sister. He now knows he is stronger than she is. She can no longer bluff with aggression. The tables have turned. Hosanna is finding the courage to face other scavengers as well. He is learning that when he stands his ground, he can be very intimidating. However, when faced with his father's nemesis, six-year-old Hukumuri, Hosanna knows that he is not quite up to the fight just yet. Jumbo Jumbo, and there's nothing as interesting as discussing or looking at leopards and looking at the prowess of climbing places. But now, look what we have climbing on rocks there. Another one. We got four on top of that huge boulder that we'd call a copy. How lovely is that? Ideally, people have always thought it's only leopards like what you're just watching there, Tandy and Hosanna, that climb, you know, places, be it trees or rocks. But apparently, cheetahs, lions also do climb, as you can see there. Well, my name is David, and on camera with me is Bungay, and we're a bit late coming in the show because we have that very special sighting for all of you. I'm sure my friends have already said before, should you have any questions or comments, please send them through using hashtags Wild Wonderland and CGTN Wild. And I'm sure you all know we're coming to you live in this show of Wild Wonderland from the Masai Mara. Apart from myself and Steve, I'm at a very different part of the Mara. 
And this particular pride of lions is called the sausage tree pride. And they're called the sausage tree pride because there's a particular type of tree in this particular area that they love climbing. They are all very good climbers. As you can see, them on top of that huge, huge uh, rock that I would call a copy, as I said earlier. This pride consists of five females and they got 10 cubs between them. And they got a pride male that is called the Oldonio Pike. That's two males forming a coalition called the Oldonio Pike. They had a kill. We cannot see the kill from where we are, but we'll try and go around and see if we'll be lucky to see uh, the kill. We normally talk of the big five in Africa. You saw a leopard earlier, elephants and lions. And now here, there could be another member of the big five with James. This is one of the most special things you can possibly see. And I'm so pleased that we've managed to bring it to you on CGTN's Wild Wonderland live show. This is the black rhinoceros. There are fewer than two and a half thousand of these left in the whole world. They are critically endangered. There are only 14 in this area. And it is an enormous privilege to be spending time with not one, not two, but three of these magnificent creatures. It's a cow on the left, a little calf on the right, and a bull on, yeah, sorry, bull on the far right, a little cow in the middle. Highly endangered and very well protected in this area of the Mara Triangle. Isn't that special? Now, the notches on their ears, you'll be able to see, are actually put there by human beings. They're put there so we can identify them all. Patty, you say tubby unicorns. Well, they're not actually unicorns. They've got two horns, one in the front and one at the back. But they are certainly very tubby. So you can see the notching there on the left front ear. Well, there's not a back ear, is there? You can see the notching on the left ear. All right, we're going to leave these fellows and we're going to go back to Trishala, who's got her cat now hunting. Yes, he is, and he's silently waiting in some bushes nearby, but these Impala have not yet noticed him. And Impala are one of the favorites of the leopards around here. Yeah, lovely Seb, you're going to show us where he is. There he is, he's watching. Now remember, this is all live with CGT and Wild Wonderland show. All live. This is happening right now. Hasana is looking at them right now. Carling, you'd like to know what the biggest prey Hasana has caught is? I can't say for sure, but I do understand that he has had a Nyala before, which is a fairly big. He may have even taken a kudu but not, uh, not a fully grown one. Now, a kudu can be quite large, 250 kgs, maybe even somewhat more than that. And Hosanna is only about 65 kgs or so, perhaps a little bit bigger, because he is growing, as you saw. But leopards are famed for their ability to pull up prey that is much bigger than them up into a tree. And that's, of course, because of their muscular structure. He's in that bush. He's in that bush and he's trying to get some cover. Now, this particular block or area is sparsely covered in little guari bushes. That's the bush you're seeing there on the front, on this left. And he's trying to look for cover and he's actually so well camouflaged that even we can't spot him at this point. But the Impala may have, but it appears not yet. Walking 
off it's Asana's last chance. Okay, we're gonna sit tight with him. Hopefully he'll be able to give us a show. Anyway, let me send you back up to East Africa while I chill out here with Hasana. Thanks, Trishala. Good luck with Hosanna, the little chief. We're back here with us at the Mara, and we have got a huge herd of wildebeest massing on the other side of the Mara River. Now, there are only so many points along the river that we have access to quite close up to see what's going on. And here, it's a little bit dense. We can't. There's an access point behind called BBC Crossing, and hopefully they're going to shift that way, and maybe we get them on our own crossing the river. My name is Steve Falkenbridge, again joined by jean -Dre. and what a fantastic afternoon we are having. So we saw this from the distance. We saw the dust bellowing in from the distance, and we thought, let's go quickly have a look. So here we've got two marabou stalks and a vulture. Looks like a Rupal's vulture there. Part of the cleanup crew. They've been busy today. They've all probably had a bath now and now doing a bit of preening and cleaning after feeding on some rotten meat. Minamu, you want to know if there's any wildebeest who don't cross? Well, it happens that you find herds come up. They get a bit skittish. They turn around again and it's very hard to know who does and who doesn't because the herds just sort of become these massive mobs of wildebeest moving and it's very hard to really know who's who. Um, whether there's some that eventually just don't cross, it's hard for me to tell you that but it seems in these large herds once they start, once the flow starts like a little drip from a tap, it then starts to flow across the river and there's certain things that turn them back but eventually it seems as if all of them eventually get across. Well anyway back down towards the western side David has been searching all afternoon for the sausage tree pride his favorite pride of lions. Well, that's correct, Steve, because if there are any animals that enjoy the bountiful coming of the wildebeest are the predators of the Masimara, including the lions, hyenas, leopards, cheetahs. Every predator, wild dogs, benefit uh, from that migration of the wildebeest. I am very lucky because I have found one of my favorite pride of lions, and as I told you, we call it the sausage tree pride because we know our characters very well. We follow them almost on daily basis. And currently, we got four members of this pride on top of this copy. There's a youngster to the left there. As I said earlier, five females. And the first one got two cubs, which are about a year old. And we got another female that got one cub, about 10 months. And the female that got four and another got three, making ten. Now, this particular pride have a wonderful information. Hi. The rolling grasslands of the Mara Triangle are home to many prides of Africa's largest cat. This particular pride is easily recognized by the oldest female, who has a kink in her tail. This is the sausage tree pride. Kinky Tail and her pride of seven were part of a larger pride of 13, but they split at the beginning of 2017. At the time, the five females had two young and inexperienced males with them. After the split, the smaller sausage tree pride shifted, looking to establish a new territory. But finding unoccupied land in the Mara is tricky. The Pride found themselves in a very difficult position, trying to keep their two youngest members out of harm's way. stalk mode. He is... He puts his belly close to the ground. He'll even go lower than that. 
those impala are still close by. In fact, you can just see them over my head. Just excuse me there. There they are. This is very, very exciting. Now, of course, leopards need to eat because, oh, they he's actually quite close now. Very close now. He's just tucked into those bushes. There you can see his rosettes. Oh, go Osana. Now the wind is in his favor at the moment. It's blowing towards him, so those in parlor haven't smelt him out yet. quite a young herd that he's looking at there. There's only really one large male. The others are quite tiny. RSS, you're saying he's getting closer? He certainly is getting closer and I'm getting more and more excited by the minute. Now, this can be quite a laborious exercise. It takes him a long time. He needs to be patient. And that's... Oh, I can hear something. And the impalas haven't alarmed at him yet. Now, an alarm call is when an animal alerts the others around it that something is around. And the impalas haven't done that just yet. So he's still safe. This could still be a meal for him. Russian catch up there. Come on, Asana. I need to hang back just a little bit because we don't want to disrupt his hunt. Cheryl, you'd like to know, aren't the Impala close enough? There he goes. For him to get one. Look at him using that vehicle. Crazy. Right there. Look at that tail wiggling. Now, he is close enough, but the thing is, it's his... It's kind of his strategy as a leopard to be an ambush predator, so he gets as close as he can. And at the moment, he's spoiled for choice. <laughs> he gets as close as he can, about 10 to 15, even closer, sometimes 5 meters, before he'll actually pounce onto his prey, a potential prey. And he's actually got a choice now of buffalo on our left that have also come and joined him. He's been curious about them for a little while. Oh, look at that. We've got a Nyamalai as well. What's oh, a kudu? No, it's a little Nyala ball. He is spoiled for choice, so he's got an impala nearby and a nyala bull nearby, as well as some buffalo nearby. Look at that. Now these buffalo are way out of his league, but there are a few calves that he may be able to take. He's spoiled for choice. All is on the menu here in the Sabi Sand today for Hasana. Well, let's wait to see what he does and what he decides he'll pick. But in the meantime, let me send you up there to James. This is by far the best black rhino sighting I've had in this area. There's been a little bit of a fight between the bull and the cow. I suspect the bull is not a mature bull. And I wonder if he's not perhaps a younger son of the big cow behind. Here's the little one, completely oblivious. And they're walking towards a herd of buffalo that's wallowing in this marshy area. I cannot tell you how amazing it is that we're sitting with these animals. They are so rare. There are five species of black rhino. 
all of them critically endangered, and I was wrong when I said that there were only two and a half thousand left. There are about five thousand left, still critically endangered, however. Look at them. They're the buffalo now watching. And you can get an idea of their size from watching them walk towards the buffalo. A buffalo weighs, a big buffalo weighs around 800 kilograms or so. A really big rhino bull weighs about 1,400 to 1,200 kilograms. So a small rhino bull and a very big buffalo bull, what you'll find is that they're almost identically sized. All right, we're going to leave these endangered species and head back to South Africa, where Jamie Patterson has found more of the buffalo on foot. I'm finishing off my day the way that it started first thing this morning with a herd of buffalo that unfortunately have just, just given us the slip and moved into some dense vegetation. And what a special day it's been for me, at least. I got to walk buffalo and elephants. And it's not every day that you get to do that out here and spend time on foot. It's one of my favorite things to do because, of course, it is the most intimate way to experience one's surroundings. Sadly, though, the last of the buffalo stragglers has gone limping off down into the vegetation. So, while we bid our buffalo farewell, I don't know whether Trishala realizes it yet or not, but she's about to find herself with not only a leopard, but some buffalo as well. Hasana is really well camouflaged. Look at that. And nothing has alarm called at him yet. So this really is the Hasana buffet for him. And he can have his pick. Now what's really difficult about getting around you is of course you don't want to disrupt his hunt. And you really, really don't want to get in the way. Because animals can be very clever, as you might know. And they can often see the vehicle. And they may, may assume or automatically alarm, thinking that there's a predator around. So we want to hang back. And make sure that we don't disrupt him. Now there's buffalo calling behind us and to the side of us. Yala in front of us and Paula in front of us. And he is smack bang in the middle. carefully and calculated there he goes oh no his head is back up I really hope he'll get something but like I said this is a game of patience it may take him 20 minutes even an hour before he actually gets something Oh no, Asana, and he's gone behind that bush. Oh well, let me send you over to Steve so that he can say goodbye from us all, especially down from here in South Africa and up in East Africa. Indeed, you are back with us in East Africa at the Mara River. The pod of hippos that, like the elephants, are not very excited that the wildebeest and zebra are around. But we've moved back a bit more to the BBC crossing. This is the very nice crossing point that we were hoping to get that really large herd of wildebeest moving through to cross over. You can see how much more open it is. But in the distance, we can just sort of make out the dust. They're all moving towards the sort of right, towards the south, towards Miti Moja, meaning one tree. And there's another crossing a little bit further down that we've been spending time at. And between here and there, there's no real visible crossing that we can witness. So as we sit here with the hippos, who are quite happy that this herd has decided to go a little bit further downstream, not to clog up their waterways, as well as their clogging up with dust and dirt. Well, it has been a fantastic afternoon coming to you live from our three locations, Sabi Sands in South Africa, Serengeti 
in Tanzania as well as here along the Mara River in Kenya, the Mara Triangle. The migration is on its way and this is episode number two and what a cracker it's been and we're very excited to show you 12 more and we'll be coming to you live again tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock East African time. Thank you for your questions and comments. Have a beautiful day further and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Good night and goodbye.